Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and today I'm here to talk about all things scrap quilts. I get lots of questions about scrap quilts. How do I put my scraps together to make a good scrap quilt? What is the best way to make a scrap quilt? And so I thought that today we would talk about that through the process of me sharing a lot of my different scrap quilts and showing you kind of what I did with each one and that will hopefully help you think of ways that you can use your scraps to make the scrap quilts you love. Okay, I'm gonna start out my little discussion today talking about this half square triangle scrap quilt that I made. Now this pattern was my free block of the month for 2019 and what I did each month was give two or three blocks that all used half square triangles. And so when I made my quilt, I made half square triangles from all of our fabric collections. I wanted to have a piece of, of just about every collection in this quilt. And some of the collections might not seem to go together when you stack them up next to a different one, but in a scrap quilt like this, it, it worked really well. And one trick that you can learn from this quilt is that if you have a lot of neutral colors, you can make a scrap quilt work more easily. Um, the neutrals, and, and in this quilt, it's kind of the solid ivories, um, make give all of the fabrics a space from each other and make it work more easily as a scrap quilt. One other thing that I did in this quilt that you can do when you're making scrap quilts is to unify it with a, a, a single sashing and post fabric. So even though the fabrics are from a wide variety of collections, I unified this quilt by using one fabric for my sashing and another fabric for my post. Okay, this is another one of my favorite scrap quilts that makes it easy for me to give you some tips and ideas. For this quilt, I use fabrics by tons of different designers, fabric manufacturers. I use some of my favorite prints in my stash that I had been having a hard time using. Um, but again, I did unify them by using the light and the white prints. Some of them aren't totally white. You can tell there's a little bit of a polka dot in this one. Um, but I did kind of try to unify the colors. And another thing I did in this quilt is I, use just the cool tones. Um, I had kind of a color scheme of the, the hot pinks, the lime greens, the aquas, green, yellow, um, reds with a cool hint, um, and really bright colors. And so in that way, even though this quilt is really super busy and has a lot of things going on, um, I was able to kind of unify it by keeping in the same range of, of colors and also by adding in that white so your eyes had a, an open space. This quilt is, pattern for this quilt is found in my book, Sunday Best Quilts. This is another one of my favorite scrap quilts that is a good one to use as an example for giving tips. This is actually a medallion quilt. And so it is constructed from the inside out. And um, the pattern is called the Marcel Medallion by Alexia Abeg. And she is one of the Ruby Star designers. Um, this pattern was available in a book and in a magazine at the time I made it. And I can link the book in my blog post for this. I believe it's still available. Um, I'm not sure that you can find the magazine anymore, but um, sometimes if you want to do a scrap quilt, a medallion style is a great way to get your foot in the door because as you're only constructing one unit at a time, you can make sure that it kind of looks nicely before you add the continuous layers. Um, so this one started out with the star medallion and then a, a border and then the triangle row um, border and then a plain border and then the flying geese border and then a patchwork border another solid border and then um, this border and the outer border so if you're really unsure about scrap quilts by doing a medallion style quilt like this you can make sure that you like the way it's working and i just use a mishmash of everything in this quilt i didn't really i did stay on the cool side again i did try to use some low volume prints 
to break it up. Um, but this one was really fun to work on because it did build from the center out. Another scrap quilt that's great to use for talking about how to make a scrap quilt or tips for scrap quilting is my Flowers for Emma hexagon quilt. This one was constructed over a period of, I think, four to five years. I started making these little hexagon flowers without really knowing what I was gonna use them for, and then ended up designing this pattern so that I could put them together. Um, and one thing I did with this quilt to kind of unify such a scrappy mix is that I did do a yellow center in every flower. And if you notice, some of them are different. I didn't always use the same um, print in the yellow centers. And some of them, like this one up here, is actually more of an orange yellow. Um, but, but still just having that, that center helped to unify this quilt, I feel like. And again, I didn't, um, I stayed kind of in the same rainbow palette for this one, so um, that made it easier to put this one together as well. Here's another example of a scrap quilt that I made. And what I did with this quilt was I used fabrics by just a few designers whose fabric collections were very, um, had kind of a similar vibe. There are Denise Schmidt fabrics in here and Amy Butler fabrics, and I think maybe even some Anna Maria Horner. But I had been saving these fabrics and I didn't know what to do with them. And again, I thought that a great way to unify all of these different fabrics by different designers would be to use this gray um, Moda Dotty background so that there would kind of be a common resting place for you to look at. And I did again stay kind of in a blue, green, orangey color palette. There's some darker prints here and there, um, but it all works together because it has the gray in order to unify everything. Okay, I've just got a couple more quilts to share while we talk about tips for scrap quilts. Um, this is another one that is made from a group of fabrics that I had been saving for years. They are actually all by the same designer, Denise Schmidt, and I had been collecting her fabrics and really didn't know what to do with them. I just had them in piles and in boxes. And so one day I started this quilt with them, and again, um, I used a, a variety of different backgrounds. Um, some of them have more of a white base, some of them have a definite cream background, um, and some of them have, you know, the dots or the little um, tone on tone prints that you can see. But it really helped to unify this conglomeration, really, of fabrics from a variety of her, of her collections. And I think, again, having the space in between made this quilt work. Um, so that is one of the techniques that I use a lot in my scrap quilts, is just to find a way, whether it's by a light background or a darker background, as in the, the last quilt I showed you, um, it, just find a way to unify the scraps. This pattern is my Mahalo pattern, and it's available as a separate standalone pattern. And I've got one more quilt to talk about, and I'll bring that up next. I wanted to be sure and show this quilt today because it is quite a bit different than the other scrap quilts I've been showing you. This one doesn't have a white background or a gray background. This is a true scrap quilt. And if it's, it's even more of a true scrap quilt because this one was done through a block exchange with a group of friends. Um, one of my friends organized an exchange where we made large log cabin style blocks and then cut them in fourths and sent, um, kept one, divided them in fourths, kept one stack of blocks for ourselves and then sent the rest to her and everyone else sent her their blocks and she then distributed them. So this quilt has fabrics that I didn't have in my stash, um, that some of my friends had, um, and you really didn't know what you were getting. We did have a theme of red and blue, 
Um, and as you can tell, some people added in some creams, some people added in some yellows. Um, there were a few things added in, but since we had that basic red and blue kind of theme to begin with, it didn't really matter. And it also didn't really, doesn't really matter in this quilt that there are kind of the dark reds right alongside of the bright reds. Because there's such a mishmash, um, this quilt works as well. Um, I did use a strong binding, the diag diagonal stripe in navy, to kind of try to um, pull that out at the edges. But sometimes it doesn't matter. And I think in a situation like this, where you have a big enough selection of fabrics that are different, it, it's gonna make a pleasing scrap quilt. I hope you enjoyed this little chat today about scrap quilts. I actually had some others I really wanted to talk about and share with you. Some of them are away. Um, being on loan to different quilt shops and a couple are going to be um, well they are in my book that's coming out in May and so they're still with a publisher so I am going to write a blog a new blog post on this topic and I'll put some of those quilts that I wasn't able to share with you today in that blog post as well and I'll also kind of go over the tips that I talked about today I hope that you've enjoyed it and that you'll consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and thanks so much for stopping by.